Uh, thank you, Peter. So, so what, why do we need to talk about uh, myocardial infarction and why would somebody want to image it? And, and this here is my motivation slide showing that while uh, card cardiologists are doing better and better and people do survive their uh, uh, acute myocardial infarct, um, what happens really is that the can just gets kicked down the road. You see that, that uh, death due to heart failure uh, goes up and that hospital uh, 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 stays in the hospital also go up. And that's because people do survive the acute event because they get a stent, they're taken care of in the ICU, uh, they're defibrillators and so forth. Um, but we created a new problem with it. post my heart failure uh, does occur in large numbers uh, uh, in many of the patients that, that get an infarct and, and it's really frequent. So in the United States, uh, myocardial infarction happens every 25 seconds. So I, I think uh, looking at the, the infarct uh, as more as just a plumbing pro, uh, problem uh, is the beginning to, to, to really find, find a solution. And if you think about uh, myocardial infarction uh, uh, in, 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 a, in a slightly more abstract way, what, what you have is an invisible wound inside the chest, so nobody uh, thinks it's as obvious as like cutting you or uh, yourself, uh, the skin, the finger, or breaking your bone. But really some of the healing processes that, that you would uh, uh, see in, in a skin wound also occur uh, after myocardial infarction. And the quality of the healing process may make all the difference. So uh, you see that after good healing, your, your infarct scar may remain compact and thick and the geometry of the left ventricle is undisturbed. Whereas if healing is derailed, uh, what would happen is there's uh, too much scarring. Uh, uh, there is, because of the intraventricular pressure uh, that's pounding on the infarct, you get stretching of the infarct. And that kickstarts a process that's called left ventricular remodeling. And uh, that, that's progressively leading to heart failure. That's shown here in, in, in patients. This is a, a, a clinical study over time uh, showing some patients that do get uh, a heart failure and large hearts after MI, and then some that don't. And we know that the, the size of the infarct is, is, is very important here, uh, but it's also uh, the secondary size of the infarct. What does the infarct look like after two weeks or so? So this wound healing uh, process is really interesting, and I think that it's actually a, a window of opportunity that we pretty much neglect completely right now. Uh, we, we take great care of of the, of the patient immediately after myocardial infarction. They get uh, reperfusion uh, therapy, and then there's a lot of things we do successfully with, with people that ha have heart failure, but the biology in the first one or two weeks is completely different. It doesn't have to do anything with the acute MI or with heart failure. We don't know much about it, and we don't do anything therapeutically. So. It, it makes sense to uh, take a step back and look at this biology. And then what I have drawn here uh, is a cartoon. You can hack up this, this, this period of, of infarction into several time zones, if you so will, and everybody has a, a favorite way of doing this. And I'm also showing some, some imaging targets here. Um, in the very early uh, uh, hours of ischemia, when uh, myocytes are uh, not getting enough oxygen, what happens is that they die. And uh, David will go into more detail about why it's important to figure out uh, whether or not they die due to necrosis or apoptosis, because some of these processes are reversible. Um, what we see very early on already is the activation of the immune system. So one of the, the key messages that I, I want to convey is you can't just look at the heart as, a, as an organ. It's part of a system. It's, uh, it's uh, closely connected to the immune system, to the, to, to the central nervous system, even uh, to the bone marrow. And I'll give you some examples of this. And here we already see an interaction with the immune system. In the early hours after infarction, you get recruitment of neutrophils and of inflammatory monocytes. These cells uh, are responders to any injury, so you find them in any, any uh, uh, type of wound, and they are thought, especially in the heart, to uh, be harmful early on. Uh, they, they may even kill off more myocytes. So in, like in, in infected skin wounds, they take care of bacteria, 
obviously you don't have an infection in the heart here, so um, their 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 uh, role is 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 uh, probably not just simply uh, helpful uh, because uh, they don't need to uh, defend against an infection. So what happens in the first three days now is that. Uh, you're looking at the recruitment of, of, of innate immune cells, mostly inflammatory monocytes. Uh, there's still neutrophil recruitment. And, and this is, uh, so to speak, the, the demolition crew that takes care of the debris. So you have a lot of, of dead cells uh, lying around. You have extracellular matrix that is being removed. And, and that, that's what these, these cells do. Uh, they, uh, they can give rise to macrophages. They uh, release inflammatory uh, uh, cytokines and enzymes. Uh, they they uh, uh, release proteolytic enzymes such as uh, 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 cathepsins or uh, MMPs that uh, digest the pre-existing extracellular uh, matrix. And they just plain take out the trash. They uh, have to remove the debris and make room for new granul granulation tissue to uh, uh, form. And uh, in, in a second uh, fa uh, 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 monocytic phase, you get a different set of cells that is uh, uh, less inflammatory and uh, is more supportive of repair. Uh, what do these cells do? They have a bit more of what people call an M2 macrophage phenotype. So they're less inflammatory. They're still phagocytic, but they, for instance, they, they support buildup of, of new matrix by talking to fibroblasts. They support uh, the formation of new microvessels to uh, uh, support the blood supply to, to infarcts. Um, so you will see a lot of ang angiogenesis in, in every uh, fresh wound, and that's actually the case in, in infarcts also. So there's really two different phases when you look at monocytes and macrophages, and these are the key innate immune cells that, that are involved in any wound healing process, but especially also uh, in, 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 uh, in uh, the healing uh, wound in the heart. So you get an early phase where in the mouse you see a lot of Lysic C high monocytes that are recruited via uh, uh, MCB, MCB1 and uh, CCR2. And then uh, you have a not so inflammatory phase uh, where repair processes are uh, uh, dominating. And uh, here we're looking at Lysic C low monocytes and macrophages. The lineage relationships are not quite as clear. Some people think that Lysic C low monocytes are recruited, give rise to M2 macrophages. Some people think that Lysic C high monocytes are actually converted to Lysic C low monocytes and M2 macrophages. So that's uh, work that's ongoing. But the bottom line is there are two phases and they're both needed. They're both important for regular repair. You want resolution of inflammation. You want the, the, the building crew to come in and, and start the repair process. So this, uh, the, these two phases exist in the mouse. I just showed you uh, uh, some, some uh, mouse data here. So you get your inflammatory phase and then the second phase with Lysic C low monocytes dominating. And a similar uh, 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 pattern emerges in, in patients um, uh, with, uh, we use different surface markers in, in patients. Lysic C doesn't work, but you see that there's an early inflammatory phase and then a, a repair phase where non-inflammatory monocytes and macrophages dominate in the blood and also in the heart. So when you think about these cells that regulate infarct healing, uh, and take a step back, and uh, you and, and you will you will see that they have a lot of functions. They are not only uh, important in wound healing. In fact, they are actually important in in the process that leads to myocardial infarction in the first place, atherosclerosis. So most infarcts happen because they are atherosclerotic plaque. Uh, 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 in the coronary arteries and, and these cells are made in the bone when monocytes uh, are recruited to the plaque and this is what they do here uh, in the plaque. They, they uh, ingest LDL uh, lipids and uh, they support the, uh, the maturation of atherosclerotic plaque. And at some point this plaque becomes vulnerable and ruptures, for instance, because proteases are released from these uh, monocytes and macrophages. So 
you, you actually have this wound healing function of those cells on top of chronic inflammation that already exists in this, uh, in this system. So, so what we did here is we asked ourselves, uh, uh, should we really study infarct healing in wild type mice or should we maybe uh, induce myocardial infarction in APOE knockout mice, mice that have atherosclerosis? Because what we do uh, by tying off coronaries in a, in a wild type mice is we're simulating infarction in a 16-year-old otherwise healthy individual uh, and, and that, that never happens. And uh, so we, we tied off coronary arteries in, in APOE knockout mice and did uh, uh, flow cytometry and, and, and saw that, that in these uh, uh, mice that have pre-existing atherosclerosis, the inflammatory reaction, uh, uh, reaction is enhanced and is prolonged. So resolution of inflammation is, is not really happening. And, and that's true for, uh, for the blood and also uh, for the infarct. So if you digest the heart, you can look at these inflammatory cells and you see that here in APOE infarcts, uh, uh, they persist longer than in, in, in wild type infarcts. So you can actually image this phenomenon using FMTCT. This is a protease reporter that is uh, injected as an inactive prodrug and then uh, activated at the site of uh, um, uh, high protease activity. And th so this is what we see in wild type mice. You, at that point, you already have like a resolution of inflammation. This is day five, six after a mine when you have this second phase with Lysixy low monocytes. But in APOE knockout mice, you still see this high protease signal here, and that's shown over here. And you can actually see that ex vivo. If you uh, take out the heart, uh, you see that uh, there, there's much more uh, protease activity. And here we also used in a, in a, in a spectrally resolved channel a nanoparticle that measures uh, macrophage activity, so uptake of nanoparticles. So persistent inflammation that we can actually image. What, what, we, what we've seen is that uh, in, in these mice, uh, uh, the, the blood monocytosis, the, the availability of inflammatory uh, uh, monocytes leads to a prolonged and enhanced recruitment into the infarct. So inflammation does not resolve, it just stays around. You have high protease activity. Uh, resolution of inflammation is impaired, so the processes uh, that 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 uh, uh, really emphasize repair are are weaker. So we have less collagen synthesis. Your matrix may be weaker, and then you get infarct thinning because you have very high uh, uh, intraventricular pressures that that work on that scar. Uh, that leads to expansion, uh, LV dilation, and then uh, a lower ejection fraction, and and heart failure. So, but what 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 we possibly have to do is we have to optimize the inflammatory response uh, after myocardial infarction. And it, that, that's probably dangerous business. If you look at some of the, the old studies in the 70s, people tried that with steroids. And I think what happened there is they just hit the system too hard. They, uh, they uh, dampened inflammation to a degree that was not good anymore. It was actually uh, you, you need some degree of inflammation, some activity of monocytes, macrophages, some, some, uh, some of this is needed for repair. So um, what you would like to achieve is that you have some sort of, of, of uh, activity of these cells at the vertex here um, that will give you optimal healing. So you, you have to push these individuals uh, up a little bit uh, backwards, but not too far. And as I said, I think that's not that easy. And uh, um, what we decided is we need to really study, study the system better and, and try to understand where these cells come from, come from and what regulates their uh, fate. And uh, this particular study that we did here looked at the source of, of uh, monocytes and macrophages. And uh, we know that they are made in the bone marrow, but here uh, what we found is if you look closely at the spleen, uh, about 50% of monocytes and macrophages that make it to the infarct uh, are actually from a splenic reservoir. So using a GFP reporter in, 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 in monocytes, you see these cluster of cells sitting in the red pulp of the spleen that are fairly similar to their counterparts in blood uh, when you look at their expression profile. In the steady state with intravital microscopy, you can see that they're pretty inactive you see some moving here, patrolling the vessel. This has been described previously by Geisman. 
um, that they're uh, uh, patrolling the endothelium here, but uh, the cells in, in the parenchyma are fairly inactive. That really changes if you do small cardiac infarction. All of a sudden, they get very active and very jumpy, and you see that they start wiggling and moving around, and then uh, what happens next is shown here. You see uh, one such uh, monocyte uh, that uh, makes it into a splenic vessel, and then it takes off and it travels to the infarct. So you can see here before and after the reservoir empties out and you can image, if you, if you take away the spleen at the, at the time of uh, coronary ligation, you can actually see how the inflammatory activity in, in the infarct goes down. So what are the signals that are uh, important for, for this, this traffic? So here are uh, some that are shown. So for, for recruitment to the infarct, it's known it's MCP1, CCR2 that recruits inflammatory monocytes. The same uh, signal is actually needed for monocytes to leave the bone marrow. And in, in the spleen, it's angiotensin II. So we did an imaging study here where we looked at the uh, good old ACE inhibitor and the impact of ACE inhibition after myocardial infarction. This is interesting because all patients get an ACE inhibitor uh, 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 within the first days after they experience an MI. So uh, what we did here is we induced MI and that did FMTCT to look at the protease activity and inflammatory activity in the, in the infarct. And then uh, we followed up in, uh, uh, with MRI 21 days later to relate the inflammation in, during the wound healing phase to outcome, to ejection fraction. And you see that if, uh, if we treat the mouse with an ACE inhibitor, that keeps monocytes in the spleen. They need uh, 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 angiotensin II signaling to uh, activate their mobility and motility. Uh, and that, that's why they don't make it to the infarct and the protease activity is lower. If you then follow up with MRI, because you, you did in vivo uh, assays uh, early on, you can see that this uh, translates to an improved outcome, higher ejection fraction and less remodeling. So there are probably other properties of ACE inhibitors that at least contribute as much to it, but uh, the anti-inflammatory um, uh, effects uh, had not been known previously. So um, the, the other uh, molecule of interest uh, is, is MCP1 CCR2. So MCP1 is a chemokine that's released uh, at the site of inflammation and CCR2 is expressed by the monocyte and uh, they Monocytes use it as a GPS to find at the site of inflammation. So what we did here is we used siRNA uh, uh, to silence this receptor to take away the GPS system from, from the monocyte. And uh, in order to reach monocytes, we uh, enveloped uh, 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 this siRNA in, in nanoparticles and then we're able to, to silence CCR2 in circulating monocytes, but also in monocytes that sit in the spleen. And then the, the goal was to, to reduce their recruitment to the infarct, to dampen their recruitment to the infarct. And, and we uh, uh, again used imaging here uh, initially to look at uh, the biodistribution of our nanoparticles that encapsulate SIR, siRNA. This is just an example how you can use uh, this modality to actually even uh, fit the blood half-life, which was very short, uh, eight minutes or so. And you see that the uh, blood pool signal goes away pretty quickly. And then what turns up here is uh, a spleen signal. If you open up the mouse, you can actually see that the, the spleen is the brightest organ in the entire mouse. And that's because our siRNA is labeled with a near-infrared fluochrome. So uh, by flow cytometry, this treatment reduced greatly the number of inflammatory monocytes that made it to the, uh, to the infarct. So you see them here, high expression of Lys6C. This blob here are our inflammatory monocytes. If you treat the mouse, this is attenuated, so you get a, a nice reduction of these inflammatory cells. And, and does this help for, for uh, the remodeling process? So we, uh, in, in this study, we monitored uh, infarct healing using PET MRI and uh, using two molecular readouts of, uh, for each of those modalities. Um, the PET reporter looked at uh, matrix repair and uh, I wanted to look at that because I was afraid that if we hit the immune system too hard, maybe we interfere with uh, the laydown of new ma matrix, which, which is important for, for the uh, for 
for building a, a stable geometry uh, of your heart. So that was unchanged, so no change in, in, in cross-linking of, co of collagen. However, the uh, inflammation was really reduced in the animals treated with uh, SICCR2. You see that the myeloperoxidase uh, signal here uh, plummeted. And that, in the end, uh, uh, did uh, translate into, into a better ejection fraction. So, um, my task is to look at what happens where, and um, so far we have talked about the infarct, but I think the other take home message that, uh, that I have is that that's not good enough. We really need to look at the system, and uh, uh, in, in this particular study that I'm touching on uh, now, uh, we looked at the plug, what happens to atherosclerotic plug after myocardial infarction. It was triggered by the insight that uh, you actually get um, a very high infarction rate in patients. So more than 20% of patients get a secondary infarct uh, right after, uh, uh, in, the, in the year after their first. So the thought was uh, maybe this acute inflammation that happens in, 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 in infarcts does something to the underlying uh, inflammation uh, in, in, in plaque and we did a serial FMTCT imaging of, of plaque protease activity. You see that uh, within three weeks, there's some increase in, 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 in plaques of, of mice that don't have an infarct, but if you induce myocardial infarction, come back three, la uh, three weeks later, these plaques really go up uh, in, with respect to uh, protease activity. And we found that this, tr uh, this really was uh, due to an increased recruitment of inflammatory cells uh, sh shown here. And uh, this is, is uh, caused by an activation of the hematopoietic system. So um, what, what I'm trying to say here is a production of leukocytes really happens in the bone marrow. But nobody looks at the bone marrow after myocardial infarction. This is something important that we need to study. If you, if you have high supply of inflammatory cells uh, to the infarct, it makes a lot of sense to look at the source of this, this monocytosis. So what we actually uh, found in these studies is that uh, sympathetic nervous uh, uh, signaling uh, in an infarct patient, for instance, due to uh, uh, anxiety and, and chest pain, uh, changes the microenvironment in, in the bone marrow. And it changes it in, in a way that encourages uh, blood stem cells to uh, uh, migrate to the spleen and encourages them to uh, start to proliferate uh, more vigorously, give rise to more monocytes, and, and then these cells not only go to the heart to uh, repair the infarct, but they also supply inflammatory cells to plaque. So this is a positive uh, forward feedback loop that may lead to uh, uh, enhanced inflammation, not only in the infarct, but in, uh, uh, on, on a systems level. So I think um, this is an important uh, message that um, while we have been focusing on, on, on the infarct, um, we, we really need to uh, uh, also look at the interaction of, of the cardiovascular uh, system with the central nervous system, activation of the sympathetic nervous system, um, um, the hematopoietic system that actually makes the leukocytes and, and the uh, immune system. So with this, uh, I would like to uh, conclude and uh, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer those.